during the medieval period, apocalyptic symbolism and rhetoric became a political tool of propaganda. It was politically expedient to vilify your enemies as Antichrist in league with the devil. Superstition and ignorance controlled the common populace. They could be manipulated by their fear of the Antichrist. Pope and king alike used these fears to motivate the illiterate masses to action. A classic example of this misuse of apocalyptic symbolism is seen in Pope Urban II in 1095, who used the last world emperor legend of Adso to enrage the nobility of Europe to crusade to the Holy Land and liberate Jerusalem from the sons of Ishmael. Count Emic of Flonheim, a leader of the First Crusade, massacred Jews who refused to convert because he was convinced that God had summoned him to be the last world emperor. In the end, each successive crusade was led by aristocratic nobility and royalty seeking to be recognized as the fulfillment of Adso's legend. Adso's work was a two-edged sword used by popes and emperors to attack each other. On one edge was the legend of the last world emperor, and on the other edge was the myth of the Antichrist. Another classic example of the misuse of Adso's work is seen in the vitriol and antagonism expressed by Friedrich II, Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, and the Roman Papacy in the 13th century, especially Innocent III and Boniface VIII. Emperor Friedrich would not easily submit to the dictates of the papacy. They were in constant political power struggle for dominance in Europe. Friedrich's supporters in Germany hailed him as a savior, the last world emperor, while the papacy, especially Boniface VIII, accused Friedrich of being the Antichrist. On March 18th of 1229, Friedrich took political control of the city of Jerusalem and crowned himself King of Jerusalem. This action only inflamed the feud Friedrich had with the papacy because it strengthened his claim as the last world emperor. Even Friedrich's death on December 13th of 1250 did not squelch the apocalyptic fears of the papacy and his supporters. They refused to believe his death was the final act of the Antichrist. The political power struggle between European royalty and the Roman papacy continued well into the Reformation era, with both sides using the two-edged sword of Adso's apocalyptic symbolism. In 1494, French King Charles VIII led an army into Italy to take up French claims to the Papal South. This action promoted cheers of the coming last world emperor from some of the citizenry, while the Pope heralded the invasion of Charles VIII as the work of Antichrist. These types of apocalyptic accusations continued well into the 18th century. The only thing that stopped this political power struggle was the rise of the Age of Enlightenment. This era caused both Protestant and Catholic clergy to push underground the millennium fever that tormented Europe for nearly seven centuries. How could brother do this to brother? The answer is simple. When politics supersedes faith, it becomes easy and politically expedient to be a Christian. The authentic Christian faith was lost in the quagmire of cultural Christianity. There is a difference between cultural Christianity 
and being an authentic Christian. A cultural Christian is one who adheres to the doctrinal position of Orthodox Christianity due to political or social concerns. But this is not a true follower of Jesus Christ. These Christians are Christian in name only. They have no faith or true Christian action. During the medieval centuries, much horror was done in the name of Christianity that was not Christian in nature. The Roman papacy and European royalty accused any dissenting voice of being Antichrist. The unity of the body of Christ was lost in the dogma of empty apocalyptic symbolism and millennium fever. The blood of the martyrs is equally on the hands of cultural Christianity as it is on the hands of pagans and atheists. Are we the agents of disunity in the body of Christ through our elitist eschatology? Do we secretly cheer when a brother or sister of a competing denomination fails? Do we also clothe our politics in apocalyptic symbolism? Are we quick to label some person or group as being antichrist? It is difficult to admit, but often our answer to these questions would be yes. How are we any different than the medieval church? These are difficult questions, but we must honestly look into the mirror and see our own hypocrisy and our millennium fever. The unity of the 21st century church is in our hearts and on our tongues.